Okay, hello everyone, it's Lennon, and today I'm gonna be talking about the WTFs that I have found in the Rider Waite Smith system. All right, using this, my lovely Centennial today. I love this deck. And I'm kind of using my Dragon as a protector today because this deck, in my opinion, has a mind of its own and it doesn't necessarily like when you talk shit about it. So I'm gonna, you know, He's just kind of over there chilling just in case the deck wants to get, you know, a little defensive. But I've got some cards set over to the to the side over here that I kind of want to show. I don't know, just some, just some, uh, like I said, some WTF moments that I found in the inside the Rider Waite Smith system. Please don't think that this is a ploy against. Pamela Coleman Smith. I love her art. I love what she's done with the tarot and you know what we you know what we all been able to decipher from her images, okay? So that's not the point. The point is, is that do these things that I'll mention make sense or are they just creative licenses? I mean, I don't really know. So we're going to go with it. Also, my mom got me some um press on nails because you know I've always been obsessed I never get them because I just don't really I don't like buy frivolous stuff like this so she bought me some from like the, the drugstore the other day and they just look so cute but I'm making fried pork chops tonight for dinner and I can't be having like flour and you know garlic all up in my nails so I'll have to take them off like literally lasted two days <laughs> so anyway I thought I'd make this video while I while I'm uh, beautified. So anyway, okay. So here's the cards. I'll set them right here so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, first is this. This is the Three of Pentacles, all right? I love this image because it's, you know, if what I like to do is find commonalities between all of the systems. And for me, this is a work card, moving forward card, find out what you can do to work together and like in the Marseille, it's kind of like a triangle and it's like forward movement, right? And then in Crowley's deck, it's the same kind of concept. It's called work, works, the works that we put in, right? And so I kind of feel like the same is for this card. It's a workhorse card, not a workhorse, but a work card. Uh, first, I love that this is, you know, the stained glass, they're working towards something. They've got the blueprints here. First of all, what is this garb that this person is wearing? I don't understand. That... Now, I know from various resources that I've come across that Pamela Coleman Smith used a lot of Shakespearean costumes as her reference guide to some of the clothing used here. This actually looks like a friar, a friar you know, not a priest, but a, a friar. But anyways, the, the point is this long cape thing here doesn't make sense so does that mean something does it not but my real what the fuck moment in this card is this this doesn't look like a traditional tool this doesn't look like a chisel you know a chisel on a hammer um i'm just not i'm trying to get to where i can like focus here and like see what i can see let's see if we can do this i think it's trying to zoom in on my dragon because you know or it could be, like I said, this deck hates to be talked shit about. Anyway, it looks kind of circular in nature, but it also looks like a chalice of some kind. Like, he's going to use that to, like, listen in on the wood or something. Like, I don't, it, you can't even tell really in the Centennial what he's, what he's holding, in, like, you know, back in the dark corner. But this doesn't look like a tool, so what is it, you know? What's happening? What is this tool that we dare not even see because of uh, because of focusing? Okay, now this. The other day I was going through. I was initially going through the deck, and I pulled the, pulled the card out, and I just like shoved it in my youngest's face, and I was like, "What do you see?" <laughs> he said, uh, "He was like somebody stealing." The swords. And I was like, okay. For what? And he was like, 
they're taking it they're taking it from you know the the tent or whatever and I said okay well what about the other two and he's like those don't matter because they're stuck in the ground and he can't get them and they're they're like useless to him and I thought see because he used the word useless that made me think of the Thoth system, which the Seven of Swords and the Thoth is futility, which means uselessness. So I got to thinking, okay, well, he isn't dressed in any kind of garb that would suggest he's part of the, the, the tournament. And so him stealing the swords is useless. Like, and these swords are useless because they're, they're like shoved into, inside the ground. But I got to thinking, okay, well, you know, there's that. And then... The what the fuck moment again was these like people back way back you know that these I in my opinion are figures of some kind and it got to me thinking like I mean well this is first of all this is a long ass stick you know like got me thinking of new ways in which I would use like utilize this card I always kind of thought of this as we're going away from something that's not benefiting us like and not in a in a in a big way but m like in a useless way like we're not useful to this situation so we need to back out of it and that's kind of what I feel with this card but anyways like who who or what is this down down here like what the fuck is this I don't know again we're gonna have focus issues here we go maybe there's a boat Maybe that's a six. Maybe that's the boat from the six of swords. Like this gondola could look like, anyway, what is this? That's what I want to say. Okay, now I'll zoom back out a little bit so we can see the rest of the cards. Okay. All right, and the next one was the five. I don't have these in any kind of order. The five, it's a windy, windy day. It's not storming per se. They're on the coast, right? Here's the two swords that will be plunged into the ground, like, you know, in that we just see, saw plunge in the ground is kind of what, oh, sorry. It's kind of what I see is like now in the seven, maybe these swords that are on the ground are now in, or on the ground, in the, in the ground here. So I don't know, we'll leave that, we'll leave that right there. But again, we kind of see this, um, I kind of see this commonality between all three systems, right? And I know that they're three separate systems. I just, I like to kind of think of them, uh, of things in commonalities. So if we look at the Marseille, something is disrupting, right? But then we look at Crowley's deck, uh, we look at the Thoth, and the five is defeat, right? But it's defeat as in Maybe these two, maybe he's got this smug look on his face because he's stolen the swords that they've used to defeat one another. Or maybe he feels superior to these people because they've, he's, I kind of think of this in zodiacal and astrological ways as well. We, we have a mediator planet here, but if this is like a mediator in terms of zodiacal or astrological, then this could be that he's actually found a way to get them to give to give up the fight, right? Maybe that's what's happening. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Anyway, my what the fuck moment is, are these two swords these two swords? Who knows? This is disruption, right? That he's disrupted this fight. Or interrupted, not disrupted. He's interrupted this fight. And he succeeded in disrupting it. So there's a defeat there with these these people that are looking all sad. Like, oh, we got to stop the duel now. You guys being whiny butts. But anyways, so there's my... Here's that. Let's do... Uh, let's get away from the swords. I got another sword in here somewhere. This is the King of Cups. Okay, now we've got a ship in the background. We've got some fish. Where is this throne seated? How big is this throne to be literally in water? Literally in water, like it's just sitting on water. Is this a statue of some kind that somehow, it like is, 
on uh, somehow it's on water it's just floating there this is like a stone throne how is he sitting there in water i don't understand i get that he's water because he's cups okay but make it to where it doesn't look like he's just kind of floating there i don't that every time i look at this card i'm like okay this is like a, a lifeboat like you're on a lifeboat it's not very kingly if you're just sitting there on a on on your throne that happens to be this lifeboat you know adrift right i guess i guess could could go into the 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 composure of the king of cups i guess <laughs> just adrift he just doesn't even you know he's just adrift okay this for the fours that's completion it's stability right and then you know in the marseille and then in the thought it's completion and completion as in we've actually gotten willpower down now that's what's complete complete of course has astrological and zodiacal things on it but um as to why we've come up with that word there's a formula in the in the thought system for it but for this this is uh, I, I believe uh, you pronounce it a chopa, chopa, a Jewish celebration, a Jewish wedding celebration, even though there's not a veil here, there's not a veil over here, but for it to be stability, completion, um, structure, right? Some kind of structure. This, it, the, 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 what the fuck moment here is this, why is it a celebration? That, that makes no sense. That makes no sense for the like this to be so off the wall with the, the celebration meaning when the other systems of tarot aren't really going the celebratory route because we're not really celebrating until we get to the sixes in any tarot deck. So why is this stuck here at the four? So maybe the 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 aspect of this card isn't the party or isn't the little celebrations that are going on here. To be honest, I think that these are the figures, um, like, if we really look, I'll have to, like, zoom back out to, or zoom in to get the thing, but if we look, they've all got flowers. So it's not technically a wedding, right? There's flowers everywhere, there's people down here, right? Yes, they've got these like robes, robes on, but could be putting on a play, you know? Like anyway, the the point is what if the point of this card isn't the party, the celebration aspect, but it's the structure of these rods, these uh wands. Like how hard would it be to stake these four things in the ground and make a, a, begin the process of completing the structure of the chopa right does that i don't know if that makes any sense let me zoom back out so does that make sense like maybe this the point of this is just just the four the structure of this of these um wands so anyway like what the fuck let's go back to the swords because she's just kind of staring at me i love this card but it got me thinking about the meaning again most people say you know you're grappling with two decisions you're you know you're obsessing over like which way to go you're kind of blinded to that decision you're you're kind of wanting to make the decision blind and i mean, I mean i've heard all kinds of things with <laughs> this uh these swords but with crowley's deck it's peace right and peace as in Peace as in, uh, the moon is in Libra, right? And we see the moon and we see this, you know, that the two swords, just like we do in the Thoth, we see them kind of crossed, right? But it's peace in that with me, I go the Libra way. I go the route that's like, okay, well, if it's Libra, then it's wanting to keep the balance and they're going to do that in the most fair way. They want to do that in the most fair way. And what if the blindfold here suggests, like the well, like, like we see in most justice 
uh, images and statues. Maybe the, the blindfold here is about fairness. We are grappling with this decision. We're weighing the pros and cons and we're gonna be absolutely fair about it. Don't necessarily think I've heard that before. So, you know, I think that the what the fuck in this card is the blindfold. Like, what if that's, this, you know, figure is like the justice uh, of it all. Like, this is the justice of being fair, being fair with your decision, ma decision making and stuff like that. So, thought that was cool. Now we have this, okay? Now, usually, the eights for me is, is stability that's gotten you into a rut. So, you're overstable. You're, you've gotten, you know, you've crossed all your T's, you've dotted all your I's, but then you've kind of gotten into a rut. You know, you, you, you have no joy in your life. And that goes with the Marseille and the Thoth. Because the Thoth, Eight of Cups, is indolence. And that's laziness. But to me, it's laziness as in not lazy like what we, like what we uh, Westerners think. It's lazy as in you've gotten to that place of contempt. It's contempt. Where... You've gotten into a rut and nothing holds joy for you anymore. So therefore you don't want to do anything new. You don't want to do anything new. It kind of, you kind of come complacent, become complacent. And so it's like, okay, so if that's the case, why is this figure walking? Why are they walking? That's a do, right? But complacency is a stopper. It's like you've, you're, you're paused, right? The stability it, has gotten to a place where you okay you just have to pause to figure out how you can judge your rut right but this figure is not paused they're like moving away so over the course of you know the last few years we've seen this meaning about walking away from all of your cups because you know you you've you've i don't even know what people are saying about this card to me it, I think people assume that all these cups are full and that you're off to find new waters, right? You're off to find new things. I guess that could technically get into getting out of a rut, but I probably would have appreciated him just kind of like these figures be switched in the four and in the eight. Like in the four, we see this bored ass person under a tree, right? But the fours are stable. And with the astrology and zodiac, uh, the zodiacal means of that card, it's not complacency yet. And see, like, you know, with the five, with the five of cups, we have this, uh, in the thoughts, we have this disappointment, right? And so it nods to that being, that being what's coming, right? But we see that figure in the four. It's like, ugh. You know, and then like the four in the in the thoth, it's about stability and it's about luxury. The luxury that we are gaining, okay? So that figure under the tree is gaining more abundance, more whatever. And he wants that abundance. So the look in that figure space doesn't make sense to me. But I've chosen to pick this card as as a way to say, okay, if this particular card is laziness, is indolence, is contempt. Where is he going? He should be bored out of his mind. So they're just kind of switched around in the cup suit in the Rider Waite Smith system for me. Okay, the two. The only gripe I have about this card, I love this card, I love his costume, okay, whatever the hell this tall hat is. What is this? What is that? This is a ship, okay? This is a ship. What the hell is this? Is this a buoy? Is this a lifeboat? It does have a sail, not as big as these. So is this just a tiny sailboat? Are these supposed to represent the pentacles? Weighing uh, to, I guess, further, further make us think about like weighing our options. Like one's really big and one's really small. Kind of like these. Like this doesn't weigh much, but this is kind of weighing you down. What is happening? And why make it look weird like this instead of a ship this is just a little dinghy in the ocean right like what is this somebody somebody help me so and then this again love this card 
it's, you know, to me, this is, a, in the writer deck, it's a companion card of some kind. Uh, I know that in Crowley's deck, it's love, but it's, to me, love you have with self. Love, it's not necessarily companionship love, but I could be wrong, you know, because <laughs> I'm going off of all the, you know, all the things. If we're looking at the Marseille, the Two of Cups is, to me, about now you have more of a capacity to love. How did you do that? How did you have, how did you get more, uh, more of a, a bigger vessel, I guess, more of a vessel. But the what the fuck moment in this card isn't this little winged lion and the caduceus, okay? The caduceus to me is a healing, uh, a healing symbol, like, a you know, if we're going off this Asclepius. So to me, this is just a, like about finding someone or something that is driving you, helping you in a parallel way, okay? Where you're working together. But with this being the cup suit, this could be about empathy. And this being a healing symbol, this being two figures, two cups, emotions, blah, 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 blah. What if this is the empathy card? But, okay, I'm gonna get into the what the fuck moment. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, what, what, what are they doing? Where, where are their, where's their hand going? Right? Why are they reaching over to this cup? Like they're gonna grab that cup. So, it's almost like this figure doesn't have a lot of empathy and this figure does and and they're wanting more. They're you know steal your empathy. Man emotionally manipulate you in a way that will get you to pour a little bit of your empathy into their cup, right? Just something to think about, I guess. Okay. Ah, <sighs> the king of pentacles. Now, in the centennial, like uh, I know maybe it's the radiant Okay, I don't keep up with all the versions of the Rider Waits that are out there. I have my plaid back, which I've had since the dawn of time, and then I have this Centennial. That's it, okay? I don't keep up with the new, the next best Rider Wait. However, uh, and I wanted to say that the, the Centennial is kind of busy. I think it's the Radiant that has like a little bit cleaner lines and you can kind of really see the details. But the what the fuck moment in the King of Pentacles is this. There's ar he's armored, okay, which I like to see. He's armored. What is this? This doesn't look like the bull. It doesn't look like a bull. It kind of looks like a, a human. But then the nose looks animalistic, right? But is it a bull? Are these horns? I can't tell. And it's like, where did it come from? Because when we look up here, both of the bulls are up here. So where did this thing come from? And, and even here, like, they're all present. All of the little things are present in this card. So where did this head come from? Did he decapitate something? Maybe all this little liquid stuff down here is this because it's like red, twinged with blood. Did he decapitate someone? He's armored. Maybe he's just come back from war and this is somebody's head. What is happening? I mean, I love all the grapes in this. I don't. Okay, just from knowing people, I guess, uh, this with great, uh, this garb, this robe with grapes all over it wouldn't have been a thing. It just wouldn't have been a thing. Um, but, you know, I don't like how it blends in with the grapes that are actually growing. Now, if we look, I don't know. Yeah, I did pull it out. If we look at the tin, okay, now I know that they're not the same, okay? But it kind of looks like the grapes, eh, the grapes from this card are kind of flowing into this card a little bit. Like this is this guy. Like they're the same guy. And then you see these garb, garbed people that could be figures from the rest of the pentacle suit. But anyways, the real what the hell moment was this head. Where, what is this? It does look kind of like stone, so it doesn't necessarily make me think it's a real head, but 
still, still a little scary. Still a little scary. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is go through this deck really, really fast and see if I can find the queen really fast because I think, I, or I'm, I'm not sure. Now it could just be that the queen or the, the, the court cards have familiars, right? And we normally see that they have familiars, like she's got her little rabbit, right? And I don't know what that is. It looks like a little cherub, but anyways. Yeah, they're cherubs. So, but there's no, um, there's no grapes, right? Where the hell is she at? She in somebody else's kingdom. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. They don't match to me. Not that they're supposed to, I guess. Because it's just about archetypes, but I don't know. It's just something about this. Like, maybe this is his familiar. But it makes me think of Alice in Wonderland. Just like, I like a warm pig belly to lay my, to lay up with all my aching feet or some shit like that. But anyways, like, what is that? That's my what the hell moment of the King of Pentacles, okay? Got more cards over here. Let's zoom back out. And then, like I said, I think I wanted to reference this because I heard in a recent video that this was a coat of arms. Uh, you know, like these are coat of arms. Like this is some kind of structure we see in other parts of the deck. And then these are figures from the rest of the Pentacle suit. Yada, 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 yada. But the what the hell moment in this, let's zoom in. What is this? What is this? Oh, that's a figure. So it's like a painting, like a mural. But it kind of reminds me, the blue, and then this castle down here. It's going all the way to the floor. And then there's this beautiful, like, checkered frame. It's kind of look like, kind of looks like a mural. Kind of looks like the high priestess to me. What is this? What is this supposed to be? Just some tapestry? Why is it outside? Anyway, it just doesn't make sense. Like, there's Libra, right? Or a Libra symbol. This looks like a castle of some kind. Castle turret of some kind. Anyways, castle turrets wouldn't be on coat of arms. But, you know, I'm going to go with what that person said. So, that was the what the fuck moment. Also this, like, is this the back of his chair? Like, is this his chair or is this his robe? I don't know. It's so weird. So this, this down here, this, so I see flowers, I see a castle, and then this thing that's floating up here, this figure of, this weird figure seems to be floating up, up in the sky. What's it, what's it telling us, people? What's it telling us? Okay, and then the last card I want to show. Oh, let me zoom out. Is the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is one of my favorite images in the Rider Waite Smith system. Because when I very first got this deck, I got the pictorial key to the tarot. And the first one of the first lines in that book for this card is Fairy Thoughts. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, if, if this was that moment where you've got all these thoughts, you don't really know, you know, what, <laughs> which of these beautiful things to choose, or it's again about decision making. Uh, again, I always think of decision making that goes into the sword suit. So this confuses me. Um, like how do we decide on all of this? And it's like, and what we decide is going to be shrouded because it's the unknown, right? We don't know what we're going to decide. We don't know the outcome of what we're going to decide is what I wanted to say. This is almost one of my favorite cards in the Thoth system as well. This is the debauch card. This is the slime card. <laughs> uh, and it makes me think of sludge in a way that you're, you're just over it. You're over it all. You, you're slow moving, slow going, 
you've been impacted so much that your emotional vessel is just full of slime. And this Oz looking figure, like this, you know, what's under the curtain type thing. And it's kind of like one of those buttons that you push, like, okay, you wanna go here really fast. You wanna pick this really fast, like slot machines, right? And you just kind of have to pick, pick one at random and go with, you have to take responsibility for whatever is chosen or for whatever comes up. That's kind of what I get with this. But with this being a debauch card and then this also being a seven, which it being an odd number, if we think of Marseille, the seven is, is disrupting the forward movement, right? Something is like, I, I kind of think of the chariot card as well when I think of the sevens. So it's like, we need to be going forward, but something is stopping us. What is that? And what if that is this, whatever is under this, you know, or we're too busy obsessing and worrying about all the things that are shiny in front of us that we can't, we can't actually move through this cloud of debauch. <laughs> so, and then I picked out the queen of cups because look at her face. She's the queen of cups, people. And look, you see the queen is, I started out with the king of cups, I think. I don't know if I started out that way, but look. She's on sand. Her throne is actually on something tangible, not just floating there like a life raft, okay? And she's got all these seashells, which I think are seashells. So pretty. Why does she look so glum? What is up with her face? I feel so bad for her. She's like looking at this, which this is actually a, a depiction of what I with the angels here, it looks like the Ark. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Grail. Why does she, she's gotten it. Why does she look like this? Is this Pandora? And she's looking at it like, I have to open it. I don't know. These are just my, what the hell's happening in these cards. Moments with you guys. I don't know. I wish. I wish that uh, we knew, I knew the answers. So anyways, if you have some insight as to what I was looking at in these cards, please leave them below for all of us that have these questions that are wondering the same things. And uh, I hope everyone's having a good day. I hope to see all of you on the channel again. Much love.